Stuart Agnew. Thank you, Chairman. In addition to being an MEP, 40 years ago, I was a soil and water conservation officer in the country that was then called Rhodesia. I've got two quick points. The first is on biotechnology. This uh, session was on technology. Some African countries have allowed their farmers to adopt biotechnology. Other African countries haven't. One of the reasons why they haven't is because of activities of NGOs, etc., here in the European Union, effectively breathing poison and fake news into the ears uh, of African governments saying it makes men as sterile or something like that. Do you feel that the European Union is being helpful in condemning biotechnology, or could it actually wake up and stop being so Luddite? The second point is the elephant in the room as regards African agriculture, and this is what is going on on South African farms at the moment. One South African farmer is being murdered every single week, and another South African farmer is being violently assaulted every single day. Alongside this, farms are being confiscated from South African farmers. Alongside the confiscation of the land is the confiscation of machinery, livestock and crops. This is because they happen to have white skins. I hope that this summit will condemn these activities, if for no other reason than it's destabilising food production in a very fast-growing country. Thank you. Who would like to start? Um, Isabel, I, I, I'm off to, over to Wojtek. Those are tough questions, and uh, maybe from the, from the NGO perspective, the, uh, on the biotechnology, not all of the biotechnology is, 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 is bad, and I'm just uh, coming back from the border of DRC and Uganda, where you have a huge Ebola outbreak on the DRC side in, in Ituri, but people don't know that there is a vaccine for Ebola that is 100% effective. It's just the problem that there's not enough doses of this vaccine. So, so perhaps, you know, if we, if we look at that, at that aspect, you know, there's not only the, 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 the bad elements of the, of, of, of the biotechnology. Thank you. Um, Jamil, do you want to tackle the issue of biotechnology as well or any of the other issues that were mentioned? Um, thank you very much. I think uh, um, my, my colleague has referred to that. Not all biotechnology is, uh, is, is bad, but... Um, the Food and Agricultural Organization especially is working with, uh, with uh, the health authorities also and the health organization, World Health Organization, on how to uh, allay some of the fears that may be there with regard to uh, these, 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 these matters. Um, the, in, in the field of environment, uh, for example, one of the biggest concerns was the use of uh, uh, food for oil. Uh, in, when, when you produce oil from, from, from food, so, so, uh, from, from crops and uh, from, from uh, agricultural produce. Uh, that is now um, not a big issue because of the falling oil prices. Uh, the um, fossil fuels have become cheaper in the last few years compared to some years ago. Uh, and then um, the food security issue is also at the center of that talk. So I'm not uh, qualified to go into details of uh, the question, but I think um, this is uh, a concern at the moment. To wrap us up, Isabel. Thank you. Um, to mention on farming and <coughs> biotechnology, I, I have to agree that it's important for us to, you, to use technology. I think there is a lot of misunderstanding and the first step would really to be to educate and to clarify people what biotechnology means because some people will get very, very scared where they hear the word. But if we are to be competitive in agriculture in Africa, we're going to have to use biotechnology or technology of some sort. In order to have higher performances and to have more performing crops and to be able to have better performing farms and having the right amount of costs, and I say that with experience. My husband is a farmer, and I've accompanied what he's done and when they evolved and they started using hydrophony for growing some of their produce, it really made a huge, huge difference in the performance and on the numbers. And at the end of the day, farms need to be sustainable. You have a lot of costs, and you need to be able to pay those costs. And to be competitive, you need to use technology. So I really think it's an issue about educating the leadership, educating the people around, so that they don't get so scared when they hear these words. Thank you. And I know we're running shortly over time, so let me just very quickly add some, add, add some points. Um, 
Stuart, you're absolutely right about the land confiscation. Interestingly enough, we were talking to the Zimbabwean Minister of Economy last night and talking about how actually they want to re, you know, re, revitalize their farms, having lost that knowledge. And they're talking about now looking forward to actually helping to get some of the old farmers to help contract back into those old, old farms. They're not going to sell, sell them the, 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 their old farms back, but what they will do is actually give them their old farms, but they're actually going to work in partnership with them in terms of contracts, that, that, not, that knowledge transfer. That might, be not, you know, that might not be what people want to hear, but at least it's a way forward and learning from the mistakes of, of, of the past.